yeah, we're going to be talking a little bit about flywheels and how you can start to build them within your own community. So for those of you, if I could get a little bit of a raise of hand, if you have heard the concept of flywheels or anything like that, um, react with an emoji. It is totally okay if you have not. That is totally acceptable. So, and while we're here, Rosie, do you kind of run down kind of a little bit about what we're doing and why we're talking flywheels? Yeah, we're talking flywheels because I, I love flywheels. I love the idea of flywheels. And um, I've been thinking about them for a while, I guess, and I've, I've written a few things about them. And um, I think flywheels it, in most places, that, at least in the, in the tech space, that people talk about it, it, people talk about it mostly in terms of kind of a growth, like a marketing and growth aspect. Um, but... I guess like the perspective that we're trying to come from is how do you build flywheels for communities and, and how is that different? And I think as community builders, often we struggle to figure out how to grow communities and flywheels for me is, is helps me visualize things and helps me work through things. And um, yeah, just generally, I think it's, you know, it's been educational for me to, to think about flywheels as a way to grow communities. And I think it's a super important point. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the flywheel before, um, really kind of think of this as a way to identify and like align actions that matter. So I think the two things that I really take most from a more flywheel methodology is the sustainable and the authentic side. It's really easy to build growth, but it's a little bit more difficult to build that growth sustainably in a way that you're not burning yourself out and authentically. So we always kind of commonly hear of a lot of growth hacks or things that will drive growth, but is it the right kind of growth that's aligned with your type of community? Yeah. So kind of. And I also think it's uh, useful to kind of think of flywheels as you're not trying to address the growth of everything. So a flywheel is uh, useful to kind of focus in on one specific area, at least to begin with. Um, and as you'll see, as we progress, that like one flywheel can like actually quite quickly be, turn into something a, a lot bigger. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think one thing, so I think as a community builder, um, especially for those who work in product or company driven communities, um, I would absolutely love to hear like, if you are working for a product led community or a community of product where you're managing a community kind of like the community that we work with at orbit where it's we do have users of the products there but other community driven product folks um like i like to think of like github if you're managing a github repository sometimes that means that you're managing a product community go ahead and like drop an emoji or raise your hand in the chat um feel free this is shameless promo time um put your community link in the chat as well we'd love to kind of hear about the types of communities that we're building but I think especially when there's that business incentive driven to communities, you often have that pressure, especially from leadership or higher up, um, drive those discussions kind of where's those members, how much value or what is the return on investment of the community? How do you actually create an event that is important to someone? Um, how do you drive even more connection? I think these are all questions I think that are especially vulnerable if you're in a kind of a product led community. So take a few seconds. Big Commerce, I think, is a really great example. So thanks, Lauren, for sharing. Vinia, I love the adventure instead. Salman, I like that. <laughs> we love the shameless promo here. It's what this time is here for. Someone hire Salman. Yeah, so from, from my experience, like, um, building and growing communities, so there's, there's a lot of pressure to kind of grow and grow and grow, and it's hard to focus in on how, how to how to go about that and um traditionally i think like we we think of growth um in, in from the perspective of kind of funnels um so if we, if we go to the next section um yesterday patrick woods who's uh, ceo of orbit he he was talking about go to community and um the, this is kind of like a visual that he had with uh, the orbit model and how the orbit model fit um, kind of flows into like a traditional, more traditional kind of marketing and sales funnel. Um, from our perspective, it is, it's kind of like we're thinking like 
was similarly aligned. Um, and the way I, I like to kind of visualize um, flywheels is kind of um, the flywheels um, that we create based on community help build up trust to then feed into funnels uh, for, for the rest of the business. Um, so, um, and previously I've called this the, the community funnel of hope. It's like you kind of like so throw lots of things and ho hope something comes out. Um, but there's kind of often there's like no real kind of strategy behind that. Whereas if we kind of take the uh, approach of uh, community flywheels, uh, it helps build more of a visual framework. Um, it helps you identify um, the thing, the, the areas that you should focus on to to, to build up the, the growth. So um, if we if we can visualize uh, flywheels as a thing that kind of builds trust, if we go into the, the next uh, slide, Erin. Um, for me, I, I've been talking about, um, you can't actually see that at the moment, but um, for some reason, but um, that, that's supposed to say, uh, marketing builds, um, helps build trust to, to help kind of, um, to enable growth for other areas of the business. And it, it could, be to kind of enable your growth team. It could, um, Flywheels can help build up your brand and your reputation um, through creating uh, community um, actions. All right, looks like we have some screen issues. So if we're seeing a little funnel here, we got it. Um, thanks, Tammy, for that help. Awesome. So I think. Quick pause here. How many of us feel like we have a lot of pressure to grow our community? So feel free to react with an emoji. If you're reacting and you're trying to grow your community in a way that's unsustainable, or you're trying to grow your community and you just feel absolutely exhausted. Um, I remember kind of coming from a previous role. It was like the pressure to grow was so intense at one point. I had a founder that put in um, about $500 of Google advertisements and stuff driving it to a community for growth, which is a way to grow community, um, but I'd argue that's not necessarily the most sustainable or even affordable in many ways. So a lot of building flywheels and building the right types of flywheels is really kind of measuring, um, we're gonna go back to seventh grade science class and start to kind of experience and grow and think about the different ways that we can lean in to building a type of action that works in our own communities. So um, first off, seventh grade science class here, um, we're gonna start by putting on our science hat and we're gonna start exploring about what's out there um, and making sure that we're experimenting with purpose. So how do you handle your growth? How do you handle and think about your community conversations? How do you think about the way that the community is growing? How do you think about what might be happening? Um, so you need to know a few things. Um, you always kind of need to understand where you're heading. So why do you need that community? What are your community goals? What are you thinking through in the large part of this community? Um, when you're experimenting, guess what? It's kind of a guess. You don't really know if it's going to work. Um, things could work out. Things couldn't work. Um, you got to throw some things at the wall, see what sticks. You're putting your mad scientist hat on. But that doesn't mean you're not just like experimenting for experimentation's sake you're creating a hypothesis and you're testing. So in many ways, you know, if I do X, what is that end result be or why will that work? And then how are you measuring that metric of success? So how do you know it's actually working and creating kind of that flywheel effect? So we dropped the link in, Rosie wrote her latest newsletter today. Um, and so if you go ahead to that link, bit.ly slash CMX dash flywheels, you'll be able to see more what's going on. But Rosie. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would just add that like experimenting is kind of key for building flywheels. And I guess like what one of the challenges um, with, I guess, just like community building in general, um, but also related to flywheels is like, we need to be able to, as community builders, have, have that freedom and flexibility to, to experiment with the things that we're doing. Um, I, I know like I've had loads of great ideas that I think like would work or, you know, people would love and they kind of fall flat on their face yet. 
and other things like seem to take off really well. But I mean, at, at, at the core of it, I think we need to have opportunities to experiment and to try things out and to use what, whatever software or tools or um, community members or conversations that we are having to kind of get, get a feel for what's working and what's not working and make changes or decisions based on that. And I guess like the, the challenge with community building is quite often um, we, we make decisions because they feel right or it's like what's, what's best for the community and what's best for the people. And it, sometimes it's hard to, hard to justify um, but I, th I think, like, um, I guess in some way, as community builders, we need to find ways to communicate that we are working towards some kind of common goal, and we have to have that common goal in, in I guess, in the back of your head, like, constantly. Um, I mean, like, for me, I, I always constantly have, like, this mission or this vision um, in the back of my mind, and I'm always asking myself, is what I'm doing aligning with where we want to head? Yeah, so kind of a very lo-fi example of experimentation is the memes board that probably many of you saw this week. So that was, it started as Rosie and I were DMing and just sharing memes with each other and couldn't just keep that to ourselves. So it had a little too much fun, but that's a really easy example of like how just these little ideas that you Think about how can you kind of have some fun and kind of putting it together. So what does that formally look like? I think, yes, it can seem a little silly and fun with the meme spreadsheet, but like, what is that actual community hypothesis? So kind of pulling one right out of our own textbook, this is kind of what we're operating on at Orbit in order to create our community. So our hypothesis is we think we can create a culture of deep authentic thinking for the community industry by creating relevant, valuable, and insightful community content. So in many ways, kind of what are we doing in order to hit that goal? So this often starts with kind of Rosie writing her newsletter and then looking at different opportunities to grow based on different feedback, data, and conversations that we had. So many of you guys have talked to us about the community memes. That's kind of us leaning into our feedback, actual feedback, and the types of conversations we have as community builders. Yeah, and um, I, I would add, like, we created this uh, hypothesis t today. This is not something that we, like, wrote wrote in advance, but, like, the idea of, like, talking about flywheels and sharing this is that hopefully over time we can, like, create processes to kind of think more uh, logically about these things and help guide us as, as a team together to um, create better flywheels and create get be better better guidance. Um, but l like I, like I mentioned earlier, it's like the, the vision in the back of my head is that like, um, if we look at this hypothesis, is um, I'm always thinking about whether what I'm putting out is is good enough. Is this like the best that I can do right now with with everything we have? Um, is this bringing value to people? Um, is you know, am I going to waste anyone's time? The last thing I want to do is waste anyone's time. So I'm always like thinking like, how how can I do better? How can I create better? Uh, and uh, and this is like the culture of of orbit that's kind of evolving over time. So, like, what can we do to really create something meaningful for for the uh, community industry? So we're, we're going to like dive in with an example of like how our work at orbit has been evolving. So Erin uh, and I are like the community team at orbit. It's just the two of us. Um, and uh, when we think of of that deep content, that you know authenticity, um, a lot a lot of it has basically started with the roots of a newsletter. Uh, it's like th this this kind of became my thing. It's like every week I was tasked with writing something new, um, and you know something interesting and you know something to spark uh, co community builders, um, and. Yeah, really, the, the flywheel is quite simple here. It's like I write a newsletter, I, you know, I go deep down into a rabbit hole, I try to find find something interesting to write. Um, I send it, uh, I publish it on, I cross-post cross -post it to our blog. Um, and then we share it about on places like Discord and on Twitter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing like really... Uh, 
you know, new about this. It's just like this is a process of creating a newsletter. Uh, the main thing here is like writing good content, and that that to me is probably the, the heart of it. So. As you can see, over the last few bits at Orbit, we've kind of had our own growth from that original flywheel. So that original flywheel can drive a lot of other things in your community. So that very simple flywheel we note in blue here on that main screen, you can see where it's, we're still keeping the original flywheel present of Rosie going into a rabbit hole, but this is now kind of expanded beyond much more of the kind of all the different community activities that we're doing today. And I think this also kind of can go into your organizational strategy as well. So one thing is this also can drive hiring. So we've doubled the community team in many ways too. We have two people now. So this is started with the original newsletter, but this is actually now possible because we have a larger community team and this can justify even hiring that second person or showing kind of the growth of what happens with you bringing someone else on. Yeah, and I, I would say like um, if like the, the whole process process of even creating this flywheel has for me has been interesting um, because it's like we, we started mapping out first a simple one and then we started looking at all the other things we're doing now um, and, and and since the newsletter like we, we've done we've done workshops we've done meetups uh, we, we've done a conference which isn't even on on the flywheel specifically. <laughs> um, We've, uh, what else have we done? We, uh, let, let me see. Jen, we've done like a lot of Twitter spaces. I think that's Nelson. Yeah. yeah, like you have a lot of Twitter spaces, um, interview series. We've brought in experts who are building communities, um, which is kind of all spun off of that original newsletter. But I think one important thing to know is that newsletter hasn't changed. So the newsletter is still a consistent habit that you keep up. Like it's one thing like, yes, you can do it once, but like it's about building that repeatable, sustainable process in your community. So you're not just kind of burning yourself out, trying to rework the wheel every time. Yeah. And so if we take a, like a specific example, say if we, if we have like an active newsletter and we then wanted to uh, create an event, like a workshop. So we've done, we did a couple of workshops recently. Um, it then became fairly easy just to promote those workshops because not only did we have kind of a, a built up reputation for producing good content, um, the fact that you know people were reading it and they liked the content and then they saw that we were doing a workshop, hopefully you know it would it would show value and show that uh, the workshops would be of similar quality to the content we would put put out as well. Um, and I guess like in addition to that, um, in trying to be effective as a team as, as a small team, it's like the workshops we did we didn't necessarily recreate from, from scratch is the workshops were very much based on newsletter content. So um, I, I experimented a couple of times and, and it seemed to work well. So, um, so uh, the art of conversations, I wrote a newsletter on the art of conversations. And then quickly on the back of that, I threw up a Luma page um, and created an outline for a one hour workshop ar around that same topic. And I stuck it at the end of the email to you know, see see if anyone was interested in, in attending. I hadn't written anything at that point, but um, you know the, the idea is that it was a, like a month away, and I I would have had you know enough time to to create something for it. But I mean, things like that are, are kind of like the way to build flywheels. It's like okay, we, we're we're writing content. On top of that content, we've I've spent probably a day putting together that original article but we don't necessarily have the resources to create entirely new content so why not build on the newsletter content that we've been creating and help build up that flywheel uh, and then all of that kind of starts to kind of um i guess what's the word? spin you know the, the more kind you like do spin. it the more... yeah it kind of exponentially grows the next thing yeah. you know you have so I think if you go on orbit.love and you go down to our blog now, you'll find five or six or seven pieces of content all about flywheels right now because we know it exists. You guys, there's a link so you guys can access this entire presentation as well as a link to all of the content about flywheels that Orbit has created. And 
that's all possible because we decided to really lean in, kind of understand what works, but also lean in and become subject matter experts on a specific topic. So Rosie just dropped the board in. You guys can totally jump in and see what's been going on, see what's kind of playing around with here and see what we're talking about in terms of flywheels. But I know it sounds like we do get kicked out right at like 5.30. So kind of just showing that, just that scale of that side-by-side -side approach um, of how a simple newsletter, I say simple, but making really high quality content does take talent and time and effort and energy. Um, the, uh, you know, the, that simple newsletter can really take a mind of its own. And that's Good. just, I mean, I, there's things that are, yeah, still forever going. And yes, yeah, and the forever going is like pretty real. Um, now that now that we like have the confidence like with um, creating like some good content and good ideas and trying to figure out what what people enjoy and like and um, getting feedback from people, um, we're kind of like moving on to like the next stage. Is like okay, is like what's next? Is like are we going to do uh, more workshops? Are we you know what what's the plan? Um, but what we've decided to do based on this is that we figured that well i th we think we can just like put on a whole series of events this coming autumn so our whole plan now is to create a whole series of, of events um focused on the philosophy of good authentic content um but kind of taking it further and say we've got the confidence uh, of writing we've got the confidence of presenting uh, people we know people are interested in these topics because we get feedback from it um so you know the next stage is is doing more of that and we're going to be doing more we're going to be doing kind of like what we're calling uh, community sprints and which is a kind of one week uh, mini mini cohorts so that, like, that's next plan and all of that is based again on this flywheel that that we have we have spinning. Yeah. So kind of our quick takeaways and we'll get, I see some questions starting to come in. If you do have them, feel free to use that Q and a feature. Um, that quick takeaways and flywheels is always start small. Um, our main board is kind of generating right now a flywheel on its own, but start small, plant those seeds that you want to grow. And if starting something kind of starts to work into it, lean into it, um, an experimental culture, so give yourself freedom and then freedom. And also I would like to add resources. So yesterday when our meme board went out, we didn't have a unique URL. And today we pinged someone this morning and we're like, let's, can you make it as a URL? Like we want memes.orbit.love. And next thing we knew it happened, which was super cool to see um, your team kind of leaning in and giving you the resources. So always kind of have that. Um, look for opportunities. So how can you find new ways to have conversations whether it's, you know, mac and cheese mechanical keyboards or leaning into some of the memes that we've created or kind of different things that you see happening, be an active participant um, wherever that may be, which is really exciting. Um, look for waste. So where are you spending a lot of your time and energy that's really not working out? And don't be afraid tossing things to the chuck it bucket. Um, and then grow. I think so. Where, what's next? Can you make a workshop out of a really great newsletter article? Can you, uh, you know, build a series of events around a topic that you guys talk about a lot? Can you build, you know, what else is there possibility? And then I think kind of the one that we all love to kind of, it's always the most difficult one, I think, is that consistency. So how can you find it and repeat it time and time and time after again? All right. Any questions? Like I said, uh, Rosie's dropped the link in and we do have, so on here, you'll find all of the resources here to what we talked about today um, with kind of the different flywheels and then the different upcoming events that we have going on and different ways that you can participate and engage with us online. So I hope to see you there, but I think we have, I see at least one question in there. So yeah. Rosie, you can find out that's done. Um, no, create fr flywheels. Yeah, I think like, um, the, the, yeah, the main thing that I would add is like, not, not many people are really writing about this kind of stuff or sharing about it. And I think there's lots of room to kind of improve this. Um, I, I see this still as very kind of beta-ish kind of stuff we're, we're doing. We're 
kind of working through our minds. We're trying to think about how can we grow things. Um, and and yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to like keep working on this if anyone wants to, you know, collaborate on anything, talk about things, or, you know, if anyone writes their own perspective on this, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd love, love to hear about that. I've jumped a question. Yes, yeah, so just like standard marketing funnels. When you've gotten a good 20 campaigns in, it can get messy. Um, what's your recommendation to figuring out this organized, like long term, to figure out what works, what doesn't, what should be repeated, and what should be made evergreen? I think uh, I would say like don't be afraid to kill stuff. Um, I often think about how the world was different five years ago, and how it was very very different 10 years ago and like 20 years ago is like you know a completely different place that we can't recognize it all but uh, you know the point about that is just to like nothing works forever um and i i kind of love being efficient with my time and being precious with, with my time so um we need to find ways to kind of get rid of stuff and like community debt is is a thing you know it's a real thing that we need to be careful about is like how much value are we actually getting from stuff that we're creating um, and how can, how can we bin stuff without, without the guilt or what, what is the proper way of binning stuff or stopping stuff? You know, it's definitely not an easy answer. Yeah. I guess the, also it's, it's not a personal thing and it's not a reflection of you as a community builder. Cause I think it's always like hard to toss something came from the media world so it's always kind of like oof. it's always hard okay, sorry times but it's not her it's trends and times change like pictures of rocks on the internet for millions of dollars these days um it's we never know how things are going to change or evolve um no one could have predicted that right um i love Jenny's comment here is scaling content is one thing, but how do you think about scaling the team along these flywheels? Yeah, good question. I think um, I think scaling the team is like, I like to think about it like, it's like, how, how can you look at the team and, and the talents that they have or the things that they enjoy doing? And how, how can you like align those with specific team members? Or like if you if you have gaps within your team as you grow, as I like make sure that you can like recruit for those gaps. Um, I'm definitely like you know aware of like working with Erin, and I'm always trying to figure out what, what what are the things that she enjoys doing the most, where does she thrive the most, um, and and I guess like trying to align the, the tasks, the everyday tasks, to to the things that we we enjoy doing, um, and and I guess for me it's like. I love to delegate the things that I don't like to do as well. Um, and there's, you know, as community grows, there's, there's definitely like lo lots of work to do that isn't necessarily fun. Um, and we need to, we definitely need to find ways to to to, to, ma to manage that. Um, but yeah, I guess I, the, the short answer to that is to have a multi-talented uh, or diverse talented uh, team. <laughs> I think we kind of lucked out, uh, or a bit lucked out, we lucked out, because uh, it was like we were already working together when we both were at orbit. So we kind of already knew each other and like strengths and weaknesses, which is kind of a secret talent. So I guess like hire within your community is always kind of a good one. But also the other thing I think is important to add, um, like we divided conquer on a lot of stuff. So it's kind of helpful to have that different people like different things which is cool. There's one more question that we can try to answer. Are flywheels uh, different for brand community and learning community? I would say uh, flywheels are different for everyone. Yeah. So it's like, it's like we, we can give you guidance, you know, you can use the, what we've created as guidance, we can create templates, but at the end of the day, you, you have to find what works for your community. Um, and, and that's a hard that's a hard part, I think. And the same applies for businesses. Like lots of people want answers to like how do you build a flyway flywheel for a business? It's like, well, you can learn how other businesses have done it, but it doesn't mean that it will work for you. 
Um, so, uh, and that's why experimenting is kind of crucial for flywheels. I think it's always know your people. That's a good part of like actually doing your research with your communities is really important. And kind of to tack on a little bit, I see Vinia's question in the chat as well. Um, I feel like a crucial difference is making a flywheel that's active versus a evergreen flywheel. They're fundamentally different process. And so kind of to add on to that and expand on that, we do have some different processes for every flywheel that we're a part of. So I think a flywheel kind of holistically um, usually will have some evergreen content like a blog post or something you can reference over and over and over again, kind of with more active or synchronous contents like an event or a workshop. So kind of having the blend of the types of activities can also help out that growth. But yeah, I think we're about to get Rip, but I really appreciate all of you guys coming. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, Grozy and I are both so, and we'll drop that link in one more time so you guys can hang out and chat with us and have that link. And I would love to hear about like the different flywheels that you guys are building. Um, so please tell me we're big nerds on this topic. So hopefully we'll see you at an event coming up. So I think the first one's just around the corner. So yeah. Thanks, friends. Thank you. Thanks, all.